Leave insert higher level maths 2020 paper two. This is the solution video to question six. So question six is our second probability question. Uh, part A, a class group carried out a study of the makes and fuel types of cars in a large car park. It found that 30% of the cars ran on diesel and 70% of these were Volkswagen. It found 60% of the cars ran on petrol and 25% of the petrol cars were Volkswagen. And it found that 10% of the cars were hybrid or electric and 9% of these were Volkswagen. One car is selected at random from the car park find a probability that it's a Volkswagen car. So to find a probability that it's a Volkswagen car, we'll basically find the proportion of Volkswagen cars that are in the garage. So there's 70% of 30%. So that's 70% of 30%. That's equal to 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.3 which is equal to 0 0.21. We have 25% of 60%, 25% of 60%, that's equal to 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 0.6, that's equal to 0 0.15. And then we have 9% of 10%, 9% of 10%, so that's equal to 0 0.25. 0 0.09 multiplied by 0 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.009. Then all we need to do is add the three of these together. So 0.21 plus 0.15 plus 0 0.009 is 0 0.369. So the probability of a Volkswagen car being chosen at random is equal to 0 0.369. Part B says the Road Safety Authority has data on driving test pass rates at all its test centres. In a particular driving test centre, the probability that a person taking the test for the first time will pass is 1 out of 4. All of the test results are independent. In this test centre, on a particular day, Joe, along with 5 others, takes the test. All 6 are taking the test for the first time. So this is their probability of passing, 1 out of 4. Find a probability that Joe passes along with exactly two others. Okay, so the probability of Joe passing, we want Joe to pass, and the probability of Joe passing is 1 out of 4. And then we also have 2 of 5 passing. So this is going to be multiplied by 2 out of 5 passing. So 2 passing, that would be a quarter by a quarter. That's the 2 passing. And then that would be 3 failing. So that would be times 3 quarters times 3 quarters times 3 quarters. And then we need to multiply this by how many ways can this happen? Because this is only one way. This is the first two people passing, but we could have the first person and the third person passing. We could have the last two people passing. We could have these two people passing. How many ways can that happen? This can happen five choose two ways. So we multiply it by five choose two. So that's equal to a quarter to the power of three times three quarters to the power of three times five, choose two. So onto our calculator. And we have a quarter to the power of three times three quarters to the power of 3 times 5 choose 2 and that's equal to 135 over 2043 we can take that as a decimal there is equal to 0 0.065 
nine. So the probability that Joe will pass along with exactly two others is just a little bit over six and a half percent. On to part three then, the overall pass rate for all drivers at another centre, so it's nothing to do with the previous part, whether it is their first attempt or subsequent attempt is a half. On a particular day, n people take the test in this centre. The probability of two people or less than two people pass the test can be written in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c over two to the power of n plus one, where a, b and c are natural numbers, find the value of a, the value of b and the value of c. So we need to find in terms of n then the probability that zero pass, the probability that one passes and the probability that two pass. And then we add these together and write our answer in this form here. So the probability that nobody will pass, well, the probability of uh, somebody passing is a half. So the probability of somebody failing is a half. So if everybody fails, that's the probability of, that they'll fail. There's n people, so that's gonna be raised to the power of n. And how many ways can that happen? That can happen, n choose zero ways. So that's just one way. There's only one way that everybody can fail. So we don't need to do anything else with that bit. Now, with one person passing, what we have is we have the person passing one way or one person passing. Then we have everybody else failing. And how many people fail? Well, if one is passed out of n, that's going to be to the power of n minus one. So n minus one people have failed. Now, how many ways can this happen? This can happen n choose one ways. So we can simplify this a little bit. Uh, this is a half to the power of one. It's just a half, a half to the power of n minus one. We can rewrite this um, if we multiply these two actually, a half to the power of one multiplied by a half to the power of n minus one, all you do is add the powers. So that's a half to the power of n. And then n choose one, anything choose one is the thing you're choosing from. So that's multiplied by n. So we can simplify this a little bit more. A half to the power of n, that's one to the power of n over two to the power of n. One to the power of n is just one. One to the power of anything is one. So that's one over two to the power of n multiplied by n. So that's equal to n over two to the power of n. Um, I should actually write this probability of zero uh, in a similar manner. That would be one over two to the power of n. So there's our first two. Now the probability that two people pass. So two people passing, we want then the probability that they pass and there will be two of them passing. Then we want everybody else to fail. So that's going to be to the power of n minus two. So if, if two have passed out of n altogether, then n minus two have failed. And how many ways can that happen? That can happen n choose two ways. So let's see if we can tidy this up a bit. So again, we're multiplying two, two things, same base. All you do is add the powers. So two plus n minus two, it's just n. So that's a half to the power of n. And then n choose two. We need a way to write n choose two in terms of n. We can write that as n by n minus one over two. Then we need to multiply these fractions out. So we got uh, two to the power of n, or one over two to the power of n multiplied by n by n minus one over two. So then what do we do? Multiply top by top, you get n by n minus one and bottom by bottom, two by two to the power of n. That's two to the power of one by two to the power of n. Add the powers, you have two to the power of n plus one. So now we have our three fractions here. One, two, three. We want to write these as one fraction with the denominator as two to the power of n plus one. 
So we have 1 over 2 to the power of n plus n over 2 to the power of n plus, I'm going to multiply out these brackets here because we have it in n squared plus bn plus c. So we're going to multiply these out. It'll be n squared plus n, sorry, minus n over 2 to the power of n plus 1. Now, for this, we need to write everything with the same denominator. So to get a denominator of 2 to the power of n plus 1, for each of these ones, you need to multiply them by 2, similar to what we did here. 2 to the power of n by 2 gives you 2 to the power of n plus 1. So I'm going to multiply above and below by 2. So that would be 2 over 2 to the power of n plus 1 plus 2n over 2 to the power of n plus 1 plus n squared minus n over 2 to the power of n plus 1. Now I have everything with the same denominator, so I can write it as a single fraction. It's n squared. I have 2n minus n, so that's plus n, and then I have plus 2, and it's all over 2 to the power of n plus 1. So it's in this form here. a is 1, b is 1, and c is 2. Okay, so if you have any questions about that, just ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.